Hi, this is Dr. Mark Sell, and uh, this is the fourth talk of, in a series of talks on uh, psychotherapy, what makes it good uh, for a good psychotherapy session. The other three talks you can find um, on the channel on the playlist. And this, uh, today we're going to talk about infant, early infant mother interactions and how those interactions can either help an, help an infant in its development or uh, hinder its uh, development. Um, research has found that many, many things happen with early newborns. Uh, for instance, the Casper and Spence in 1986 found that when mothers read Cat in the Hat to their fetuses once a day during the last six weeks of pregnancy, newborns found that story much more familiar than another story also read by their mothers soon after birth. Amazing. Malier et al. 1998 found four-day-old infants can discriminate between their mother's amniotic fluid, colostrum, and milk and show a preference for uh, the mother's amniotic fluid and colostrum on day two and milk on day four. McFarlane 1975 demonstrated that six-day-old six infants discriminated the smell of their mother's milk and also showed preference for the mother's breast pad when the pad of another lactating mother was placed near the head of the infant. Most observers agree that newborns, newborns exhibit two major forms of emotional expression, distress and contentment. But Lewis, in 1994, pointed out that expression of interest also seems to be present at birth. So rather than being passive and withdrawn, we have infants being very active and perceptive. Infant research has shown that infants can suffer when a parent is distressed. This dis distress can stem from long-term characterological problems, and infants can be at risk to develop insecure attachments and compromise cognitive uh, outcomes. This is from a paper by Murray and uh, Cooper, 1999. Uh, one day I saw a baby um, and his caregiver on the bus. And uh, to me, both were obviously in distress. The, the caregiver was trying to feed the baby, and it was, you know, bringing the spoon down into its mouth. As it did that, the baby was trying to reach up and grasp the spoon and direct that spoon. Um, the caregiver usurped the baby's intention and uh, would not allow the baby to participate. And the baby would start wiggling around and uh, uh, in, the, in the caregiver's lap, and, and the more that happened, and the more the caregiver uh, tried to uh, make sure that she had a, her, uh, the agenda to uh, to feed the baby. Uh, so the baby's intention was uh, completely ignored. Very disturbing. I wanted to go and say something, but of course I wouldn't do that. In her paper, Mother Infant Research Informs Mother Infant Treatment, 2010, Dr. Beatrice Beebe notes that over 50 studies have shown that the security of the child's attachment to the parent is dependent on the emotional availability of the parent using uh, global assessments and clinical ratings that determine this study, the findings of this study. Therapy for the heart is about our emotional world and how an understanding of the emotional worlds of both patient and analyst contribute to effective treatment in psychoanalysis. Modern analysis involves the emotional interchange between analyst and patient. Uh, I've gone over this before, but it bears repetition. Modern analysis is somewhat different than um, classical analysis. It's, it's, there's no requirement about coming two or three, four times a week. Uh, state law uh, mandates that that's not necessary in terms of licensing of therapists. It's not about confrontation uh, or interpretation, although interpretation can happen at times, but uh, that depends upon the person's uh, emotional development. Uh, it, is, uh, it is, among other things, about listening, uh, uh, being uh, empathic, uh, symbolically holding uh, the patient with a degree of affection and care that Winnicott uh, talked about, which we mentioned in the last talk, and the capacity to have an emotional exchange of feelings with patients that further their development and their ability to communicate. The interventions of the analysts, some of which are called joins, and the analyst's emotional responses are what helps move the negative interjects from the ego, um, the negative interjects, interjects meaning the self-recriminating attacks, I'm worthless, I'm no good, 
into the object world. And this is uh, specific to modern analysis as far as I can see. It's mu much more of an interpersonal um, um, uh, method in theory than uh, our other um, interventions and other, other methods of treatment. Uh, last but not least is there is a resistance and transference. Uh, modern analysis is very much the Freudian uh, um, uh, tradition in that sense of focusing uh, and believing that transference, when one does focus on transference and resistance, they're conducting um, uh, psychoanalysis. This is going to bring me, bring me right back to Dr. Beebe's uh, paper uh, when she speaks of the transferences of a particular mother that a particular mother had to her baby. Remember, transference is like a painting. You could take a brush and uh, I might say, I, might, I could have a transference to a patient, or a patient could have a transference to me. The patient walks into the room and um, she sees what I look like and suddenly she has a really negative reaction. Uh, it has nothing to do necessarily with me. Uh, most likely it has to do with something that uh, I remind, someone who I reminded her of in her past that perhaps was very mean to her. Uh, so that's a transference and transference uh, is ubiquitous. Uh, we don't really see the other person uh, and when we have transferences we're really seeing something that has nothing to do necessarily with, with them. Dr. Beebe writes about the importance of a mother cueing in and setting the pace of interventions in accordance with the child's needs, not like the person on the bus that was in accordance with the child's needs, and how mothers can react to perceived re feelings of rejection from babies. She writes, maternal difficulty in tolerating momentary infant gaze aversions is one of the most common pictures observed in mothers and infants who present for treatment. If the mother feels that the in infant does not like her or is not interested in her, she may pursue the infant, increasing rather than decreasing the amount of stimulation. In her pursuit or chase, quote unquote, mother call, may call the infant's name, uh, pull the infant's hand, or in rare instances, force the, in the infant to uh, head to get the infant to look at the mother because she's feeling rejected. Maternal chase behavior is counterproductive. The infant then requires more time to regulate arousal down, regulate arousal down suffi sufficiently uh, to return to gazing at the mother. Instead, if the mother can be helped to give the baby a time out to re-regulate, cooling it when the infant looks away, if she can give that time out and wait, uh, trusting that her infant will return to her, then, then, the, then the infant will rapidly uh, re-engage. Why may a uh, mother not trust the infant to return? This has a lot to do with the mother's history. I have a patient who I was working with and she was very um, <coughs> deserted. She was deserted by her mother repeatedly and mother wouldn't show up when she was really depending upon her to be there. So when she was in a relationship when they had a fight or an argument that was might be just temporary. It might not have been a long could have been a short period of time of uh, interruption in there, seeing each other. She would repeatedly um, text, text messages to him or phone calls and or phone calls to try to um, get him back. And this, of course, just drove, this drove him away further. So she, once she got a handle on what she was doing and once she got, uh, has some knowledge that this is a repetition of her history with her mother, then she could really try to control, she could control that. And, and um, not to respond impulsively. And I want to go to the case uh, of a nine-month-old infant, Cecil, that is a major part of uh, Bibi's paper. These observations, by the way, are made um, through a microanalysis of videotapes, uh, very careful observation, research, observational research by Dr. Uh, Beebe over a period of time with this particular mother and infant. The mother presented because she was concerned uh, because the baby did not look at her uh, or smile, and then she would tr try to engage her baby by moving into the baby's face, you know, probably very intrusively, uh, not pausing, continuing to offer toys to the baby. And, and then the baby would retreat, and the harder the mother would try, the worse it got. It would push her baby further away, just like my 
patient would push her boyfriends away. Field in a paper 1981 verifies that infants have a look, look away action. The look away is a way of trying to self-regulate, to come down from a state of arousal, which includes an increase in heart rate. So of course the mother at the beginning of this uh, treatment, uh, 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 before Dr. Beebe worked with her, was not aware of this need for the baby to regulate and not uh, aware that too much intrusion could work against this self-regulation. We talked about transference in the second talk, so for instance, how my patient did not feel I was, um, would experience him as special. That was in the first or second talk. In this paper we found, uh, we find BB uh, helping Mrs. C discover some transference reactions that prevented her from seeing what uh, Dr. BB describes as both sides of the bilateral effects of each partner on the other. In other words, infant and mother participate. They're both. It's not just the mother. It's the infant's culling some kind of culling some kind of response from the mother, and the mother is responding uh, based upon her, um, by, based upon many things, some of which are her history, uh, rather than the actual uh, what's actually is happening between her baby and her. Uh, Mrs. C saw how she acted like her own mother acted in setting the pace. So she was uh, doing very much what her mother did when she would rush in and try to engage with her baby. Uh, uh, Dr. Beebe uh, reenacted the face that she saw in the baby while this interaction was happening. Then the mother saw in the therapist's face the face her baby had because of this imitation, which was just like her mother's face, impassive, hard to reach and hard to read. And the baby acted just like Mrs. C did as a little girl to withdraw. So this is a little dance that went on um, that was a repetition of uh, uh, Mrs. C's uh, mother and her infancy in her infancy. Mrs. C became aware of how similar her infant's baby behavior was to her own childhood and how the infant acted uh, just like Mrs. C's mother. So that was Mrs. C's uh, transference, or um, uh, mother transference that was being uh, rep repeated in, uh, with her baby, which she was unaware of until uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Beebe uh, was able to help her become conscious of something that was only understood in a, kind of an implicit way, but not. So, so she brought it to her attention and then things began to change. But before that, Mrs. C um, responded to her infant's impassive face just as she did as a little girl. She became anxious and tried harder. And it's fascinating how things can be repeated and that's what we try to do in therapies to help people understand so that they don't repeat. As Mrs. C became aware of these subtle transference reactions, she was able to change her pace and see her child for who he was. She writes to the therapist at the end of this successful treatment you helped me relax and see him. So, have dis so having discovered Cecil, I fell in love with Cecil. Uh, it's amazing how our perceptions um, that falling in love with her nine-month-old son, you know, really resulted from her clearing up, um, uh, literally clearing up her in her perceptions, her her, um, not literally, but I think you know what I mean, that, so she could see something that was happening that was derived from the pa past in terms of her experiences with her mother and not, and not really having, uh, which was interfering with being able to help her baby thrive. Um, Dr. Beebe also did another study where, which she found that uh, look, observing four, four month old infants and she could, um, by observing their interactions with each other, um, just like she did here, uh, but this is a, a much broader study, uh, they could predict at age four months what disturbances may occur at age one. It was a very reliable prediction of what disturbances a child could have at age one by looking at these frames of, uh, uh, of mother-infant interactions uh, at four months old. So it's a lot, a lot there for preventive uh, mental health with uh, families.
I work with a patient, um, one of my earlier uh, treatment uh, cases was a woman who was very disturbed, extremely depressed, and um, she went through many therapists before she came to me. And uh, even though I was a younger therapist, I was able to help her better because I don't think I respond, I think I responded differently to the other therapist rather than giving her shock, putting her into sh hospitals for shock treatments, I was able to stay with her. I had a good supervisor too, I can't take all the credit for that by any means, but she was extremely depressed and she would come in, I would, uh, I would sit with her. And I, I got this profound feeling, a really deep feeling that was very bothersome to me of being very depressed and hopeless and uh, not seeing any light at the end of the tunnel. And I said, well, what's going on with this? Because I didn't feel it particularly depressed at the time. And so I discovered that this was something that she was experiencing that she experienced, she couldn't experience it as a child. It was too much to tolerate. So I really was feeling all these feelings that she couldn't allow herself to feel, which is something we call projective identification. And after I understood that, I, was help, I could help her eventually when she was able to talk. I had to sit with her for a long time with these feelings. Uh, but I could help her talk about her, her childhood and how terrible it was for her to come home at the end of the day and be met with a um, depressed mother who couldn't talk to her, was, was unable to communicate and therefore couldn't engage her and say something like, well, how was your day, or just take an interest in her. Um, so part of the emotional world of the analyst is being able to um, sustain and tolerate feelings that patients may have had that were, were, they were not able to tolerate at the time. And that's why it's the emotional world of the analyst and the patient, because half the work is therapists learning about themselves and how they're feelings, um, you know, have, uh, they participate in the patient in, in a helpful way or an unhelpful way. So if an unhelpful way would have been to um, avoid these feelings, to ask the patient a lot of questions, um, um, and which would have been interfering rather than being able to sit with her for a long time. Some of you may li be listening to this and thinking, well, now this is really difficult. Uh, um, you know, it's very hard to be a parent, uh, I don't want to do this, but in, 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 in another way, as long as you uh, catch your mistakes, there's not that much to worry about, and that's what consciousness is, and that's what we try to help people develop. If you can, if you can, if you can catch your, the way you respond to your child that was just like, the, you, just like the way that you promised you never would respond to your child, then you can act differently. You don't have to be um, um, impulsively repeating past behavior. And that's what therapy really, how therapy can help um, uh, parents who are thinking, or people who are thinking about becoming parents. Um, it's very helpful because like, if there's a lot of conflict between a couple, uh, they may tend to argue. Um, uh, uh, if they argue while the, while the baby, while the mother is pregnant, uh, as we uh, found out about uh, with a mother who read you know, Cat and Hat to her child, uh, that, that child, that child is gonna, it's gonna pick it up. Um, um, and um, cause distress. Uh, so th those kinds of and and what what we do, what we do as a couple, is often repeat those behaviors that, that we promised we would never we would never fight in front of the child we would never do that and all of a sudden it's just in our bones it's in our blood. So um, that's how therapy can be very helpful to catch these things, um, that these repetitive behaviors, and so we don't have to repeat them when we have our. When, our, when we have our children. I think it's very great for people to come in therapy when they're very young because they, it's re preventive mental health and you don't have to wait until you're 50 to come and say, well, you know, I wish I had gone into therapy uh, that many years ago. Um, you can you know, gain momentum by um, starting out early. I want to thank you for listening and um, I hope you can subscribe to the channel on the page you'll see, on uh, the channel you'll see a uh, subscribe button and a button also that you can friend me if you'd like, that would be nice. Um, and if that happens, if you do open up a channel on YouTube, if you don't have one it's easy to open and you could open it up and automatically it'll get downloads of 
you, know, you don't get downloads, but you'll you'll get a notice of uploads of a new video that um, I I made and put up on the channel. So that's an automatic notification. Otherwise, you can return to the channel at your uh, leisure and um, see if there's something new on here. So I might I probably put a video on every week or two. Um, and with some uh, new information and I hope you found this informative and uh, again this is uh, Dr. Mark Sell. I'm going to sign off for um, Therapy for the Heart. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.